three, uh, and cosine is negative one third. So how you dial that up? Well, you take negative one and divide it into three equal pieces. That would make this negative one third, which means that uh, we're here, right? The, the cosine, that means the x coordinate is negative one third. That means that this is our angle theta, right? It's dialing us around to where we're in the third quadrant with x coordinate negative one third, right? Uh, and sine of phi is one quarter, and we're in quadrant two. So we take the y axis and divide it into four equal pieces and say we're right here because the sine, the sine is the y coordinate, right? So this is the angle phi, uh, where this is one quarter here. Uh, okay. Now we want the tangent of the sum of those angles. Mm. So where's the sum? They're both uh, fairly large angles, right? I think the sum is going to take us back to the uh, first quadrant, isn't it? it? Looks like it. Right? If I take theta and then dial up more phi on top of theta, uh, I'm going to be back in the first quadrant. So we know tangent is positive. Alright, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, so let's let's go ahead and, and work out. So we have the uh, addition identity for tan theta plus phi. That's going to be tan theta plus tan phi. Is this doable? Over one minus tan theta tan phi. And um, tan theta. Well, that's going to be negative because we're in. Sorry, positive, because we're in the third quadrant, right? So um, if cosine theta is equal to negative one third, then uh, sine theta, which is going to also be negative, is negative, I need to take the negative square root of one minus one ninth. You see why that is? I'm just using the Pythagorean identity again. Sine squared is one minus cosine squared. Cosine squared is one ninth. One minus cosine squared will be eight ninths. Uh, I want the square root of that, and I want the negative square root because I'm in the third quadrant where sine is negative. Okay, so what does that mean about uh, tan theta? That's well, gonna be sine theta over cosine theta, right? And we've got both of those. Um, now, th there's another approach to this, which is, um, let me erase the rest of this so I can use the space here. Um, the other approach is to use the other identity, which may be actually even easier, right? What's the other identity? Well, tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared. Uh, sorry, I should not implement the argument. Um, plus one. Well, so it's equal to secant squared theta minus one, right? That's, that's one form of the Pythagorean identity. And so if I know cosine is one third, that means that uh, secant is three, right? Or negative three, but I'm going to square it and get um, uh, nine minus one. So that means that tangent theta is going to be positive two root two. I want the square root of eight, right? <coughs> Does that work out here, same thing? Yeah. Right? If I take the ratio of sine to cosine, the negatives are going to cancel, the threes are going to cancel, I'm going to end up with two root two. I think this one's a little faster, though, right? I don't have to compute sine first. I can just use secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine. All right, so this is going to be two root two. How about tan phi? Well, for, let's see. For phi, we know uh, the sine of phi is a quarter. Do we have an identity? Yeah, I think for that one, we actually need to say, okay, if, if sine of phi is positive one quarter, that means that cosine of phi, and where are we? We're in the second quadrant where cosine is negative. So that's gonna be the negative square root of uh, one minus one sixteenth, the square of sine, right? So that's 15 sixteenths. So that's going to be negative square root of 15 over 4. 
Okay, so what's the tan of phi then? Well, it's going to be sine over cosine. Sine over cosine, the quarters are going to cancel out. We're going to get a negative, and it's going to be one, negative one over root 15. Is that right? Yeah, because we've got cosine in the denominator, and the quarters cancel out. So you end up with um, negative root 15 over 15. Sure, that's correct. And so uh, that means that um, the second term there is going to be a minus root 15 over 15. Read it in weeks. Well, it's not that bad. <laughs> so what do we get uh, in the denominator? One minus the product of this and that, right? Tan phi and tan theta, which is going to be negative 2 root 30 over 15. Yeah, well, okay. that's what you got to do. Or, I mean, it's one way to do. Uh, I don't think you, you can do it much simpler. So, there we are. So, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 15. Oh, dear. Yeah. So, this is going to be 30 root 2 minus root 15 over um, 15 plus 2 root 30. 30 doesn't have any square factors, right? So, we're kind of stuck with root 30. 2 times 3 times 5. So now what? Do we care to rationalize the denominator? Do I hear any takers for <laughs> rationalizing the denominator? How would you do it? Well, you'd say, you know, multiply by the conjugate, right? On the top and the bottom, so you'd say minus minus five. Um, is it, let's see if, if it turned out to be worth it. Uh, so on the top, <laughs> Products, right? 450 root 2 is one of them. Um, okay. And you're going to get um, oh, four little products. There's one of them. Um, how about 60 root 30? Minus 60 root 30. I know. And then um, minus 15 root 15. That goes all the way to uh, San Leandro. I don't know. There is no root 15, is there? Not that I know. In any case, uh, finally, uh, 15 root 2. Oh, OK, so we have a, a yeah. So we're going to say plus 15 root 2. You see where that one's coming from? This times this. Well, you got a square root of 15 times the square root of 30. They both have a factor of square root of 15. I bring out the 15. And they're both negative, so it's positive. And we're left with root 2 under the radical. So we can combine the first and the last um, and um, get you know, 465 root 2. And then what are we going to get in the denominator? Well, we're going to get 225 um, minus 4 times 30 is 120. <laughs> which is um, 105. Looks like everything is divisible by 5, huh? So finally, we'd have, um, let's see, 90 plus 3 is 93, root 2, um, minus 12, root 30, um, minus 3, root 15, all over. What do we say that was? 105 and one third of 105 is 35, so that's all over 35. There, we simplified it. Was it worth it? You have to do the last one. You did uh, minus 3 square root of 15 and plus 3 square root of 2. I, I, I did it, actually. <laughs> it's I, yeah, the 15 plus um, 450 is 465. Oh. And one third of that is 93. Okay. Yeah, see? I just don't have patience for explaining it all, all the time because it's a lot to do, isn't it? Strikes me as a lot to do. Um, Quick question. Yeah. So I think I already may know the answer. Use the conjugate versus multiplying it like last time, how we actually multiply by the same value for the denominator. But considering it's addition and subtraction, is the reason why I use the conjugate this time? Or yeah, right. Otherwise, just for that particular reason, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. You, know, so you want to get rid of the, the radicals, so you want a difference of squares so that 
you just get squares. So you wouldn't. 15 squared minus uh, 2 root 30 squared. Right. So in a case underneath it was 15 times 2, you know, root 30, you, would, you wouldn't use a conjugate. You would just use the same exact yeah, value, right? right? Yeah, then I just multiply it by root 30. Is that pretty much applies across the board yeah, in all situations? Yeah, if you some, then you need to conjugate if you just have a single term. Uh. You don't need to bother with that. Goodness. What? Oh, my goodness. I wish somebody would have like, said that like last year. Yeah. Right? Uh, right. When you're having fun. Yeah. Uh, well, I find it kind of fun, but uh, yeah. It's also a little bit uh, dreary computation. So there's some more interesting ones in here. Well, where are they? Uh, um, somewhere up here, I thought there was something interesting. Wasn't there something interesting on this page? Well, um, let's just have a short thing, two minutes, okay? So just uh, show me.